We start with the significant worsening of relations between China and Australia. Beijing has defended one of its officials who tweeted a fake photograph showing an Australian soldier holding a knife to an Afghan child's throat. The tweet containing the fake image was posted on a government account. And as you can see here, Twitter has put a warning of sensitive content on the tweet. It does still allow people, though, to click and see the image, which we've pixelated uh, out the disturbing scene here. The image prompted an outcry in Canberra, with Prime Minister Scott Morrison demanding the tweet be deleted. He's also asked for an apology from Beijing. This is what Mr Morrison told a media briefing. The post made today, the repugnant post made today, of an image, a falsified image, of an Australian soldier threatening a young child with a knife, a post made on an official Chinese government Twitter account, posted by the Deputy Director General of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mr Lijian Zhao, is truly repugnant. It is deeply offensive to every Australian. Well, in Beijing for us following developments is Steve McDonnell and in Sydney, our correspondent Shaima Khalil, who told me how the situation between the two countries is really deteriorating now. New low, but in a very, already very, very tense relationship. And I know we keep saying that, we keep saying it's getting worse, but that's because it is every time now there is a headline with Australia and China relations, we almost know immediately it's going to be bad news. And look, the fact that Zhao Lijian actually condemned the findings of that report, the alleged war crimes report about the Australian Special Forces being involved in 39 unlawful attack, uh, unlawful killings uh, during the war in Afghanistan, the fact that he condemned that isn't quite shocking because he said that last week. He actually used the findings to accuse Australia of double standards when it comes to uh, human rights uh, violations. I think it's the fact of that doctored image, the fact that this image was used by a Chinese official foreign ministry spokesperson used on an official Chinese government Twitter account, and that the image itself is quite inflammatory, as you described it. It, is, it depicts a, an Australian soldier uh, with a knife uh, put against uh, an Afghan child's throat with the Australian and Afghan flags in the background. That has clearly pushed uh, Scott Morrison to use some of the strongest language that we've heard him use against China. He called it, he said that the Chinese government should be ashamed of yourself, demanded an apology, didn't get one, um, and said that it was, um, it was a slur and that uh, Twitter should put that down. That didn't happen. But I think the context to it as well is quite complex. Look, this comes at a very sensitive time for Australia, the country, the military, even the public and the government, they're still reeling from the findings of that report. The fact that 19 SAS soldiers could be, could be facing uh, could be facing court charges, could be, facing, could be facing prosecution because of those murders. All of this makes for a very bleak picture. And the fact that this comes at very high tensions, not just politically and diplomatically, but also trade tensions between the two countries, all of that makes for a very bleak picture in relations between China and Australia. I will say this, though, which is worth noting, that despite that open fury by Scott Morrison, he still left a little bit of room for diplomatic maneuver. He said that he hoped that this will uh, will inspire a reset in relations. He said that he, he hoped that there's still room for dialogue. But judging by uh, by China's tone, by China's rhetoric, I don't think he's getting one anytime soon. Absolutely. Well, Steve, uh, tell us more about that. Scott Morrison calling it a repugnant, demanding an apology. We've had the daily briefing to the media in Beijing. What was said? Yeah, well, Hua Chunying was the spokesperson today and what she said is that it's not China who should be ashamed in all of this but Australia. I think Beijing thinks it's on a bit of a winner here actually. So after that tweet from Jali Jen, he wasn't at the press conference today but his colleague Hua Chunying was and what she said is, I'll just read a couple of lines, she, she was asking rhetorically, well you know, has the Australian military conducted such terrible crimes in Afghanistan? Uh, have they killed people in this cold-blooded way? And I think that they're able to gain some traction on social media by 
posing questions like this. You know, uh, it is interesting, though, um, we also asked the spokesperson, does this have anything to do with the overall collapse in relations between Canberra and Beijing? And no, we were told it actually, it's a, it's a separate matter. This isn't to do with all these other fronts on which China and Australia are fighting one another. But interestingly, I did ask the spokeswoman at one point, well, this does seem to mark a bit of a change in Beijing's position because China's always saying we don't get involved in other people's internal affairs and so therefore you shouldn't be getting involved in our internal affairs. Now, obviously, this doesn't have anything to do with China. It's Australia and Afghanistan. And so I asked, maybe this represents a, a change in Beijing's approach. Well, uh, the spokeswoman was, was actually sort of, um, well, in, in a way quite uh, upset almost by this line of questioning, suggesting that it wasn't worthy of the BBC to be asking this and wondering whether it was because I was an Australian citizen, perhaps I was sort of seeking to divert people's attention from the issues at hand. And I uh, reassured her that no, in fact, that, that it was a genuine question because it does seem to represent a shift in Beijing's thinking. If it's going to start making statements about all these events all over the world which don't involve China. Nevertheless, I, I mean, I, I don't imagine how much worse relations could get between China and Australia when you have this type of thing being placed uh, on social media, when you have such strong language going back and forth between Canberra and Beijing. And if Scott Morrison thinks that, uh, you know, this could be the start of a reset, I, I, I mean, it, it seems like we're a long way from that at the moment. I can't see anything from this end which would indicate Beijing's preparedness to start to really mend relations with Australia just yet. Yeah, the relationship really at a new low there. Steve, Sharma, thank you both very much for joining us.